What's up, everybody? I'm Johnny Christ, and this is Drinks with Johnny. Thank you guys for tuning in to another week. Make sure you're subscribed, push that notification button, all those wonderful things you're not going to want to miss. We're always coming out with new content each and every week, and sometimes even on the weekdays. Um, <laughs> today, I'm really excited. I'm joined by two of my very closest friends, my family. I've got Michelle Hayner and Val Sanders here today. You guys know them as, uh, as the, the wives of, of my fellow bandmates, Brian and Matt. Um, but we're, we're here to talk a little bit about everything and uh, St. Owen. Very cool, right? How are you guys doing today? We're doing wonderful. Super, super excited to be here. I know, you finally invited us on. It took a long Yeah, long. yeah it was, it was, it was a long, long, three. long waiting list to get on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, get on that waiting list. We've been talking about it finally for a while. Our, our number got pulled. <laughs> Well, to start it off, before we get into all the fun stuff, the questions and everything like that, um, I wanted to have a little icebreaker and play a little game I'm calling, Who's the Better Team? Oh. Oh. And, uh, the, we're, the, so it's kind of like a spinoff of the Newlyweds game, where I'm going to have a question, you guys answer either yourself or your sister, which is who is what and everything like that. I've got some whiteboards and some markers down here for you. Oh, this is serious. Don't let don't let your uh, your sister see your okay. answer. Right, and thank when you, you guys are ready, we'll we'll go ahead and start this off. Okay. Can't wait. Now while they're getting set up, I'll let you know that uh, Val is a badass, and she's drinking scotch before me. She's drinking some of the lost spirit stuff that I had from uh, season one. Is that season one? Smokiest. Shit, I've ever had in my life. I was like, wait, am I this much of a badass? Like, and Michelle is starting off light with a little bit of uh, Kim Crawford, Sauvignon Blanc, but well, I'm sure that's not what's going on. You're making me sound like a pussy now. <laughs> that yeah, that, I've, got, I've got Buddy Stoffa from Seattle Brewing. So, uh, yeah. And now we're ready to play the game. You guys All ready? All right, I think we know uh, how trivia is going to go. Yeah, oh, yeah, we got trivia later, too, so uh, yeah, keep your wits sharp. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, that's why we play trivia at the end. Oh, no. <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> All right, so the first question is, between the two of you, who has a darker sense of humor? Wait, so Wait, we're, we're just supposed to write it down? Yeah, just write it down. Write okay. down who you, you either yourself like, or your sister. I will see your board, Mel. Okay, I'm trying. Okay. okay, like number one and then answer. Oh, Take you just, no, this. just write it out and then you can wipe it off and then do oh. it again. Oh, yeah. okay. That's why we use oh. the whiteboards. <laughs> it's almost too easy. Oh yeah, we should have rewatched yeah. the newlywed game before I playing know. this. Like, so and then we like spin Who's it ever around. watched the newlywed okay. game? I, I only know, know from I like, watch, like comical references. I only ever watched Family Feud. <laughs> That's a great one. So okay, so the question was, who has the darker sense of humor? What's your answers? We got a Val. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. That's. Where's my little here? Is this for so me? far, yeah, yeah. Thank you. There's, there's another one down oh. there too, if you want, Michelle. I was also seize my thumb. All right. Okay. Nice. Right, whichever you want to use. All right, let's go. There's a, there's a dirty joke there, but oh. I won't say it. Um, you should. <laughs> Since I so have then. the dark sense of humor, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> uh, which is the best show to binge watch, in your opinion? Is it Friends, Seinfeld, or The Office? This one's not really about, mm -hmm. you know, this one's not necessarily Are we just same. testing our twinness now? Yeah. Okay. Now let's see if you guys come up with the same answer. Okay. Mm. I can't see your board. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this game is flawed, so. <laughs> <laughs> this one's hard for me. I'm, I'm like kind flawed. of torn. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's not flawed. It's just uh, okay. going to be a... Careful. Well, I was a little more. I just realized I'm probably in your shot when I'm like that. Oh well, we'll fix it later. No, no, you're good. You're good. I'll sit back. Okay. Cut. All right. So, the question was, which is the best show to binge watch? Friends, Seinfeld, or The Office? What'd you guys come up with? I went with The Office. Oh, I went with Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Oh, oh I they are different people Seinfeld. after all. I was. I actually. <laughs> I was hard to write Seinfeld, and then I and then I erased it. I would. And I should have known. Were different by now. I we? know. I, well, I'm just, I'm, I'm here for the audience. But I, know. Just, I, I know the answers to all this stuff. I'm just here for the audience. <laughs> she, she actually doesn't like any of those. Uh, that makes sense, actually. I actually knew that. I'm, I, this Sam that came up with these questions. But if any, <laughs> if any, Seinfeld. Uh, ready for, the, for question three? Let's do it. Which one of you is the biggest procrastinator? So you can write yourself 
Pour your sister's name down. Oof, she's gonna be mad at me. That's the point. <laughs> Oof. That was hard. Okay. You guys got your answers? Yeah. Oh. That's a hard one. Oh, I, no, I don't have an answer. <laughs> it's a puzzler. Family's okay. definitely not coming over till 10. Ready. Um, <laughs> which one of you is the biggest procrastinator? What was your answers? Shell. Oh, uh, you guys both knew it. Okay. Okay. Truth and I, be told, I peeked. I saw her board. Oh, <laughs> cheater. Boo. Deduct one point from <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But, okay. All right. We're both like really working on our procrastination. I so think I think that equal. was why that was a hard one because we're like, we're well, both aware of it. And especially with business, like we're helping each other like be better about not procrastinating. Yeah. Yeah. I would say more about like indecisiveness. That's what we're both have a issue with and we're trying to like push through. Okay. So well, I like that you both have a little self-awareness and well, that, that was good. That was good. Self-awareness happening these days. <laughs> So number four is going to be who would be the best Jeopardy contestant between the two of you? Ooh. I would be the host, obviously. I'll fill in Trebek's shoes. God rest his soul. <laughs> you would kill it. I don't know. I can't read that well. <laughs> <laughs> your, your memory for uh, unnecessary details. That. That, 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 yes, <laughs> things that no one needs to know for a thousand, Alex. Uh, so <laughs> who would be the best Jeopardy contestant? And your answers were? Oh. oh. No. You both love we each other. Both we bad. both would suck. That's yeah. why. <laughs> yep. So that's why I know. Not, not going into the tournament that's of why champions. Why I know trivia no. is going to be great no. later. <laughs> I can't remember anything. It's yeah. Like, it, oh, won't be as, it won't be as hard as title. Jeopardy because Sam wrote the question. So, and, you know, we're we all know he's not that smart. We're so. both going to be. <laughs> We're, we're, both, we're both going to be bad. Cheers. <laughs> we lose. <laughs> Number five. This is a fun one. Who, between the two of you, would be the top chef? That's a good one. Make the same sound? That one's a good one because <laughs> I know both of their cooking very well, and they're both phenomenal. This is oh, going to be a little very, tough. Very cute. I will always remember the first time I had the vodka, sauce, pasta, and Oregon on Thanksgiving. That was amazing. I know. I keep asking for that. I will make it for you again. Well, we need to go back to the cabin. Okay. No, this summer. Yes. Let's do it. All right. So the question Kevin was, who oh. between the two of you is the top chef? And that's just us trying other. to be just nice. nice. Yes. Yes. Oh, She's trying to be way too nice. She's way better than, than me. <laughs> Like I'll I'll chef it up a bit, but she's like phenomenal. That's okay. A, did, that no was nice another cities. tricky tricky question because we actually both cook a lot. Yeah. So yeah. it's like Italian families. She, you know, yeah. Very Italian. The Italian it's in our blood. My so. papa. My papa You're always, taught me well. You guys are both always cooking up a storm when we when we get when we have get-togethers, which is always nice. Better than you know, like we were talking, our families are going to come over here afterward. Just a little tidbit back behind the scenes there for you kids. <laughs> and uh, we're uh, we're just gonna be ordering pizza because I'm lazy. It's so much easier. Oh, yeah, you guys cook. Well, all that the time. we had a show to do, and so lazy. it's like I'm gonna get behind the grill yeah. right now. Yeah, you're a little busy. Yeah. <laughs> you guys both, you and Lacey both cook all the time. Yeah, I do. The I more see the grilling. menu on the board down there. I know, we have a menu every week. Yeah, <laughs> that's. It incredible. lets me know what I'm what I'm gonna eat that night. It's kind of nice. Uh, next question is who owns more personal pairs of sunglasses? So obviously not your gl sunglasses in Saint Owen. Which one of you has the most sunglasses? Previously, we don't buy anything. No, you don't buy anything. You don't wear anything now. but St. Owen. Why would you? Vintage, we buy vintage. You actually. don't want to wear anything but St. Owen. They feel much better. <laughs> <laughs> so the question was, who owns more personal pairs of sunglasses? And your answers were? What? Oh. <laughs> You for sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Where, where, where's, so just try and picture your guys' closets, because I know you guys both know each other's. We raid each other's closets all the time. That's true. <laughs> she blew that one. My pants. It was her for my sure. My shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I got her those earrings. At least her top is original. Yeah, that's yeah. Gotta be, <laughs> so that's got to be like the nicest thing about being twins, is you guys just have the same clothes oh, like, it, like your entire lives, right? It's, oh, yeah. It's rad. Yeah. We definitely. I mean, she gets a little annoyed because sometimes I just keep things. 
Yeah, she takes them and she never returns them. I'm like, where did that shirt go? And then I see it she's like two, the year, of the group two years the later, fence. she's wearing it. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, we just shouldn't get done to that. What's the next question? This one is, what was the worst childhood chore in your house while growing up? The one that you guys and Chris didn't want to do. Mm. You'd fight over it, over this cho- this one chore of who had to do it that time. I don't think I did a lot of chores. Growing up in the harbor, kids. <laughs> harbor Spice. Remember? Harbor Spice, for sure. Jimmy, Jimmy's <laughs> name for me. Oh, Jimmy had the best uh, name there. That was oh, fantastic. Yeah. That and Little Buddha. This little is going to be a, oh, a wait, funny I'm one. Right at your board. <laughs> oh, this is going to be. All right. Cool. <laughs> The worst chore of the house is cleaning my room. Oh, That's yeah. That's the worst one, huh? Uh, yes. <laughs> Mine, I don't know if you can see, but doggy poop. Dog shit. We got dog shit. Yeah. That no That's definitely one I of the worst I definitely did jobs. not pick up the dog shit. <laughs> Speaking of, you guys just got a dog. Yeah. I, I got to meet the dog. I saw pictures, but I have not met the dog yet. Oh, I'll tell Matt to bring yeah. the pup over. Bring if him you don't over. Mind. Let, 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 oh, let, him, let Peanut show him the ropes. Yeah. He's already tormenting Pinkly. Oh, yeah, I, I think he it. needs some uh, some peanut action. Well, I don't know. Someone it's to put him in a place. Peanut just my dog Peanut is an asshole basically and no. fights other dogs all the time. And even though he's a nine pound terrier, I think he can get along pounds? with Georgie. Yeah, he's not as spicy as he used to be, is he? Uh, no, Peanut not since the German Shepherd next door took him down and we had to take him to the hospital. <laughs> what? When did that happen? Big ass, uh, it was probably six months ago. Big German yeah. Shepherd, like just, Peanut was being a dick, so he just put him in his place, just bit him. And he was such a, Peanut was such a bitch about it. He like got like a little puncture wound in his neck, but he was like, oh, I'm dying. And they're, they like, they could barely find it. And they're like, what kind Wait. of dog did this? And they're like, no, no, like a 100, 120 pound German oh, Shepherd. They're like... Poor yeah, that was just let, that was just a warning. <laughs> Still, puncture wound to the throat. I mean, poor little guy. It's not like you hit the trachea. <laughs> <laughs> you raise your dogs just like you raise Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> so Throw true. some dirt on it. Let's go. So true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Peanut small. I'm small. Frankie's gonna be small. <laughs> it, it ain't, ain't time to bleed. Uh, but with the big bite What's next? Uh, who is the most approachable between the two of you? Now I know that answer. And the your answers for most approachable are? Yep. Absolutely agree with the both of you. Val is definitely the more outgoing, approachable one. All right, then. Darkest, what was it? I have the darkest. Darkest sense of humor yet. But still, still yeah. approachable. <laughs> What does that say about me? Most, most <laughs> vulgar, darkest sense of humor. Oh Still yeah, we're gonna get into that, some of that humor from from the van days when uh, you know it was always it was always taken one step further by either you or me, pretty much every time. Um, yeah, I don't know if we should unleash those secrets, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next question is a true or false question. In and out is overrated. True or false? This requires some big letters. <laughs> I like I've seen both of them go at it. <laughs> I mean, we know. Absolutely. We well. know. We know. We're from yeah. Huntington Beach, Southern California. <laughs> it is not overrated, motherfuckers. In and out, through right. and through. Yeah. Don't come up here, Shake well, we Shack. Well, we had Trevor Wallace on. I, I listened to Trevor Wallace about talk about how much he hated the cardboard fries. Or maybe it wasn't Trevor Wallace. It was one of the other comedians that came on. And they were talking about it and like, if you didn't grow up with those fries, I could kind of see I it. had an issue with the fries for a little while. So yeah. I'm not going to lie. The fries are a little odd. You gotta, they're just get, different. They're, 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 they're an acquired they, taste. They taste a little fishy. Like, yeah. They're like a little but weird. Once you get into it, though. But do like, you guys you ever get them well taste? done now? No. I started asking for them well done. Oh, that's the secret. See, I just don't even judge by the fries. I'm talking about like, the burger. The yeah. 10 by 10s. Yeah. Oh, I never got my tattoo. Shit. You still got to get your 10 by 10 tattoo. So yeah. we had a, a, a thing for all the audience at home. We, uh, there was an ongoing challenge where you'd make a 10 by 10. And at in and out you can secretly order however many patties or pieces of cheese you want in the sandwich. So you get 10 patties, 10 pieces of cheese in one sandwich. That's the challenge. If you can eat it all, you have to get the 10 by 10 tattoo. Val did this. Uh, and I believe you continue to eat afterward. 
Yeah, because I was like, I've already consumed this much. I might as well go by 7-Eleven and have some donuts, a little chocolate milk. I don't know, like whatever. <laughs> might just might as well just pack it in. Cheat day, right? My theory is, once you consume a certain amount of calories per a 24-hour period, it just it just stops counting. Your yeah. body stops counting. It just, it just, it just goes just, right through you. It, it can't yeah, possibly it can, absorb that. It can't absorb. I'm also only talking about <laughs> calories. Like, she's forgotten that there's, like, a certain amount of stomach capacity involved here, right? <laughs> okay. like, I can really consume anything, yeah. I think. Well, <laughs> so. again, that's the Italian, right? Like, that's got to be. Yeah, I don't know. She's the only But the only anyway, I'll get that tattoo that one day. It. Yeah, you got to get that tattoo. What's that? She was the only girl of the group that did it, that's for yeah. sure. Who did it? Okay. Jason, Jason, Dan, Dan Matt. Matt. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember if I finished or if I even bothered trying, but I never got the tattoo. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember if I even bothered. I was like, "It's not this is silly. It's not. <laughs> it's not too late, Johnny." Oh, it's never too late. I, too now, late. I was just. I was just gaining the weight first, and then I'll now you're the prepped. Challenge. Now I'm prepped. You're for ready. It. Yeah, I was gonna do a little man versus food. All right. <laughs> Next on drinks with Johnny. <laughs> Johnny just versus In and Out. I'll just, it, it'll end up just being like that uh, viral video from like probably 15 years ago now of Hasselhoff getting in a fight with a cheeseburger on the floor. Remember that? Yes, oh. <laughs> I do remember that. I don't. On to the next question. Okay. <laughs> this is the final question for the segment. This is uh, which of you would have the best chance winning the show Survivor? And who would have the best chance of winning in the game Survivor? Damn. Yes. I would, I would like have to not win. sounding very cool right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so and funny. that's how we play. Who's the better you. twin? <laughs> you, that one! <laughs> you, have that other, one. <laughs> you have other wonderful attributes. You just didn't touch yeah, base on them. I think the questions <laughs> were just biased. They were skewed. totally biased. <laughs> they were skewed. Well, now that they we've were got skewed that. towards badassness. <laughs> <laughs> Badassery. <laughs> Badassery. Um, so yeah, now that we played that, we got the little icebreaker. But you need a refill over there, Michelle? Yeah, because yeah. I am also oh, a yeah. badass. I might not last the show if I keep up with this scotch, this pace. <laughs> That's a 54 percenter, so. Okay, well, I'm going to catch up. I'm going to catch up to Val. <laughs> I'm going to catch up to Val right now. And how are you going to do that? I brought you something. Oh, you oh. brought a gift too. I, I brought a gift. Too. Mine's not wrapped. <laughs> oh, it's wrapped in brown mine, paper. Mine, yeah. Mine's straight out of the suitcase. Oh, my favorite. Oh. Oh, my God. That's a good gift. So, this bottle of tequila has very many significant values to it. Uh, where you guys got married, where uh, Michelle and Sinister Gates, uh, Brian, whatever, fuck you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> got married um, May 7th. What year was that? Yeah, I was going to be impressed if you remember. So, was it 2010? 10? Yeah, okay. Wasn't sure because I knew it was, it was shortly after Jimmy had passed. Yeah. I didn't remember how shortly after, um, which we'll get into that. But yeah, this bottle was the bottle that um, we were there for like a week with you guys. And we went taste, tasting tequila, and this was like everyone's favorite bottle while we were down there. You can Apollo. only get it down there, and it's still the same little tequila shop, still there. Yeah. Still making those barrels, remember? Yep, I had a barrel. You can age for a it while. in those little barrels. Yeah. Same, That's so cool. Same yeah. thing. You can, and you literally can only get it down there. And you so. know, if you put your face on a tequila, you know it's going to be the best, right? <laughs> Don Malachi, yes. This is this yes. is definitely a lot better than that. And don't don't forget trivia. The loser has to take a shot from the hat. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Watch that face. That's like not even anyone related to the family of the tequila. It's oh, just a random thing. Just Google some dude it like, just he looks like he's a, he could be on a bottle of tequila. He looks cool. <laughs> you know, you know, like, you'll have to ask Brian. I think he got the story about it. Oh, I think he? that might be like really a family member. But okay. you'll have to ask him. I'll ask him. You're not going to make Val do one, are you? Wait, I'm going to mix scotch and tequila? I mean, we just talked about how badass you were and all this oh. badassery. Oh. I know. But, but, but she doesn't drink You don't drink know tequila. why Johnny did that? Because he knows I never deny a challenge. <laughs> he fucking knew exactly how to get me. But, you know, this is sipping tequila. Well, we, yeah, yeah, not today. No. Yeah. <laughs> Crap. <sighs> It goes down so smooth, though. I mean, oh, we did really find nice. out. That's crazy. Are you going to tell the it's secret? Crazy, I am going to tell the secret. <laughs> so we loved this so much. We put it in uh, aging barrels and stuff, as we talked about. This 
specific tequila. Like, it's so smooth, so smooth. And someone was like, it's too smooth to be that high in alcohol content. Yeah. Is so we put it in a freezer, and it actually froze, which means yeah. it is not that high in alcohol content. But what does it which say? Which works for me. What, is it, what does it say? It doesn't say it's that high. It says 38%. But I, I, I call normal. bullshit on that too. Thirty eight percent shouldn't way. freeze. It just doesn't have yeah. that that after. I don't know how to call. It. It's just like this, like burn at the end. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, when it's like a certain high percentage, it has. But this I'm burn not sad it. about that. Or no, neither am I. Like I I'm I, sure it's I something prefer, a little bit more than it, sake. You know, a yeah. little bit more than <laughs> sake. Who's badass now? Taking tequila shots a little bit more than sake. <laughs> Oh, so let's get into a back little to the bit. Scotch. Back yeah, to my back to the scotch. 54%. Thank you so much for bringing that. That's awesome. I know oh, you guys just got course. back from Cabo. I was, I'm really excited to, to have that up at the bar. Um, yeah, they got their vaccine our shots pleasure. and they went... <laughs> yep. I mean, how that's we what not? you do, right? Everyone's it's been cooped up for a year. Doing, I mean, yeah, exactly. Everyone's doing it, we, right? We ran out to Seattle for a week, you know? Yeah. So. We've God. all been Mexico very cooped up. up. <laughs> yeah, not, the, not, not exactly the same. But uh, yeah, we just touched upon uh, your wedding, Michelle, to uh, Brian Sinister Gates. Um, and I've known, obviously, we've known each other for an extremely long time. Now I already know this story, but I'd like to hear in your own words, both of you, um, how you met your significant other, your, your, your husband, your worst half. Um, <laughs> how did you meet, and uh, how did you meet Brian first? And then, uh, you know, why, why was he the one? Well, this is a long story. I'm gonna have to this do what the we're short here version. For. And this is gonna be like a four hour podcast. <laughs> you oh, can have your, be the first time. your work cut out <laughs> for you editing this. Um, cut and slice. So I met Brian in middle school. He lived in a neighborhood next to us, as you know. Mm -hmm. We all lived in the nearby neighborhoods. And um, Mesa View Middle School. He wasn't really allowed to go out too much. <laughs> then and then he moved away and then came back and joined the band and um so he was always uh obviously around after that and we just became best friends and one thing led to another in other words he was uh he was persistent. after me <laughs> let's just call it what it was he was very persistent <laughs> I mean, can no. we not, can not we, throw okay. him under the bus? But uh, <laughs> we can't go through the story and not mention us all being in the van and yeah. Brian on his sidekick. Is that what those were? Yeah, yeah. he's on sidekick. his sidekick, texting like feverishly, like all the time. We're like, oh, he's texting Michelle. Oh, he was like, always texting. Michelle. It was like so hilarious. Yeah. What was it called then? It wasn't texting though, because it was like messaging. No, that was you know. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. It was what like, was it on the sidekick? SMS oh. S text. I don't know. It was I don't know. I still it had wasn't my, I still had my Nokia, yeah. Yeah. my Nokia Let's, flip phone. You and yeah. Jimmy held, held on to those Nokia Nokia's flip phones for, for so time. long. I guess I'm, it was I'm always text, but the, the new thing was that it was like a full keypad. It like flipped up. Oh, that was, yeah, the, that was, it was the first time that we'd that seen a, a full keypad. Yeah, like, full yeah so we took full advantage and just like messaged all day, every day. And we weren't even officially dating at the time, but we were just best friends, quote. And Val was all scared, like she didn't want us to date because she yeah, thought I that I would. Like, yeah, he you, was you, like, you my, what, what happens? <laughs> you know, your best, your best friend and your sister. He was like, like what happens if that goes yeah, sour? Worry totally. about me complicating things. He was definitely. <laughs> I mean, he was definitely one of my very best friends, and my sister doesn't have the best track record for, for uh, <laughs> being gentle with hearts. And so, <laughs> heartbreaker. <laughs> I mean, and so I was. I just continue to just sound like an awesome. Human this is like being. the best. This is like the best version of, of Michelle. All the stories. So I was, I was definitely concerned for how this was going to play out, and uh, it worked out for the better. I mean, the better than I could ever imagine. It was just well, it's incredible that we're all so close. And yeah, well, now I you guys, can't. you guys have. Joined from the, you know, we were already family together as friends, grow, you know, that we've been through, you know, you guys even earlier, but, you know, over the last 20 years, basically, that I've known you guys, we're all family now. But yeah. you guys literally took two of the band members yeah. and made them all legit family. Yeah, Brian, Brian <laughs> and Bad are brother in law. It's like, how funny is that? It's wild. It trips people out, I know. Like, yeah. I'll never forget. We get into the elevator in, um, are you switching to wine? Sydney. Yeah. Oh, I'll take yeah. some of that. Okay. With uh, Trey Cool. I'll take white. 
We get in the elevator in Sydney with Trey Cool because they're playing. We're like all in the same hotel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh we were that? going the to that bar, or right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were going to the oh, we Melbourne. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Oh, what? We we're going was to it the Melbourne. The oh, okay. I think it was. Oh no, isn't that the that Why bar? Why did we all go to that? I thought the it. Was, oh no, no, no! The pizza and beer bar that we yeah. went to with Trey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that right. That was Sydney, right? That was. Sure. It all anyway, <laughs> together. One of those Australian <laughs> countries. <laughs> Sorry, so Australia. We get into the. We love Australia, though. We love it absolutely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's hard to remember all those things. They blur together. Uh, we get in the elevator, and he goes, "Oh yeah, you're the twin fucker." <laughs> oh, <my laughs> I remember God. that. And I was like, I mean. He's it's not funny. wrong. He's not, he's not wrong, <laughs> but it like proved everything I thought that like people are like, what? That, that find it's bizarre that, and I, I get it that two band members are dating two twins, right? Yeah. Or not, yeah. at the time, I mean, originally was dating, obviously. At, no, I was, we were married at the time, actually. But um, he later apologized, actually, for that. But And so actually now it. Val's good friends with them. Val and Matt hang out with them yeah. all Wife all the time, so yeah. So no hard feelings. Love Trey. I think he's, he was awesome. just being funny. He's being Trey. Yeah. <laughs> he's being Trey. You know, Trey that's, that's Trey being Trey. He's a fucking drummer. That's what. Next that's what time I see him, I'm gonna make sure to tell. Yeah, him you story. have to remind him I don't about think that. I told him. I haven't told him. I bet I, Sarah is gonna be like, mm. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So I guess Brian must have not met him. Like he was saying that, like to Brian, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so. Point being, I thought it was like, oh, okay, so everyone does, like, talk about the fact that, like, <laughs> oh, Event Seven Fools married to twins, you know? Oh, yeah. But the first the assumptions for, are gnarly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> well, yeah, and then they don't know the backstory that we've actually known them for so long. Like, well, yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, like you said obviously, middle school. Brian's my fucking soulmate. Like, it's like we've been through everything together, and we, and we started as best fucking friends mm -hmm. that and like he just like kind of weasels way in like <laughs> <laughs> I love that. but uh i think that going back to the family part like for us yeah it trips people out but for us it's just magical yeah. like it is such a special thing to all be together and to like share all these things together to get to tour together to have our kids all our out kids and, are you so know close like we're and all it's really incredible it's like blessing, it's really yeah. special it's like like, I just, I feel so blessed. I'm so thankful that, like, my soulmate happened to be in a band with my sister's soulmate. Like, yeah. that just is, like, a miracle. Like, it just doesn't happen. Guys, really doesn't you know. guys all met at, at middle school, right? Like, uh, you also met Matt in I think in everybody knows okay. Matt Val's story, right? <laughs> Probably. I mean, so Matt... I don't know if I know the details. I'll get a little cheesy real quick. No, this is what it's so, for. Like, we, got napkin, the, we got napkins down there, too. They, do, they double <laughs> as, uh, as, as, as tears. I'm not a crier. <laughs> <laughs> Badassery returns. <laughs> but I switched to white wine, though. I think that this brought me down a scotch, notch. But it's kind of awesome to go from scotch to white wine. I'm not going to lie. I needed, this feels like water after that. I'm oh, like, I'm sure. This is yeah. hydrating me. Yeah, it's <laughs> cleansing the palate. <laughs> Um, You're supposed to be drinking. So some. the first time yeah, with that, you, that's, that's actually, water. If you need some water, it would be smart to drink some water. That's actually, uh, yeah, oh, I told you guys before. This. That's uh, okay. Joe Maganello is a ambassador to that. One of the guests this on the show genius. from last year. This reminds me of like so. Tour, it's the tour branding water, is you know? genius. The branding is genius, and it and it is and it is like the tour water. Um, Liquid Death. Yeah, remember the, on the, the name tour? behind? Yeah, warp, remember when we take showers with it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Liquid death, so it's like, it's death to, you guys mm. will appreciate this, I know you guys, uh, death to plastic, basically. Oh, so good. Like using yeah. plastic bottles, aluminum is a lot easier to be recycled, so that's, yeah. that's the idea. That's good news to me. Oh, I, I love that. that. I don't know if, I watched the podcast, I don't know if I, I don't think we talked about, about it that. on that. I don't think we talked about it with oh, you at that okay. time. Yeah. Because, yeah, I, I think... You guys talked about it briefly, but maybe not the story behind it, because that's really no, cool. No, I don't think I we talked like about I feel like I would have re remembered that. That's really cool. Yeah, but that, that's true, though. Like, on Warp Tour, what Val was talking about was there was the the uh, monster, monster waters. Monster, yeah. They yeah. were cans like this, and there were waters, and sometimes you couldn't get to the showers, or the showers were crowded, whatever. There's a multitude of reasons why, but, you know, it's... 100 degrees in, in Arizona, and you're, you're sweating, sweating bullets. all day. All day. you got to do something before you get in the van. Cause yeah, cause yeah there's, no, there's no 
air conditioned bus. Six, there's no seven air conditioned people bus this time. Yeah. in the van after a long ass sweaty day. Like incredible what the smell can exude. In. We'll come back. We'll come back to Matt in a second. But, but I want to. I want to dig into this a little bit more because a lot of people who don't know, uh, Val was actually our tour manager well, for several years, and not just like not just in the van. She was also still our tour manager on our first couple of buses. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, how many, how many I just, years? I always say that I ditched out right when it got easy. Yeah, <laughs> so true. Right right when we also, had the, actually, the, the babysitter of the band and and mom I was of the like, band. I'm five years in. There's a bunch of crew members to help me. There's a bus with air. I'm done. Yeah, pick the pick the right time to get out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, the, but but back to those warped tour days with the monster water. There was this is the good part. It was like, oh, here's monster energy, monster energy. You could have as many cases of monster energy as you wanted, but we got like one case of water. It was like liquid gold. Oh, totally. It was like we were killing ourselves drinking these fucking energy drinks all day long, and then all we needed was water to like replenish ourselves. And it was like, who's got the water? We have this one case. It was like rationing water out. Oh, yeah. And how oh, scarce oh, it can be. Oh, because we used to eat all the euros, too. Oh, God. And it was so salty, Late and you drink euros. all the alcohol, and you're so thirsty. <laughs> and you just couldn't get Everyone any. goes through all the water. It was like you had to hoard them. Like, had a few, you know, yeah, for oh, yeah. the middle of the night. <laughs> all right. This is really bringing me back, because remember the Dirty Bird? Jimmy's Dirty Bird? Which Dirty Bird? <laughs> So, on the rider, we always had a chicken. Oh, oh yeah, 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 the rotisserie yeah. chicken. The rotisserie we called chicken, it the dirty chicken bird. would sit there for All day. eight hours, <laughs> ten yes. hours, and no one would touch it. But Jimmy, at the end of the night, would eat this dirty bird. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, what's but funny is one of the one of the rotisserie it. chickens actually made everybody sick when we were we were like in Jersey or something. We had like a photo oh, shoot I don't remember. with like the. I just had one of them on, and we talked about it. Uh, Joanna Angel from like the Burning Angel porn franchise. She was like the main one. And yeah. Back in when we were doing the City of Evil stuff, where we'd yeah. photo, photograph all the girls and stuff. And I was just looking. My brother has the revolver the, spread with the two girls like laying on the table. Yeah, yeah. He has. And one of them framed. I went to high school with, which was fr- hilarious. Yeah. I was like, it took me he back. Framed it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, what where? the fuck is wrong with you? And where? Chris, <laughs> what <laughs> Literally, like, was framed sitting in his garage. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's an odd thing to have it's framed in your uh, garage. Yes. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, more power to you, but I mean. I, mean. I don't know. Is it odd, though? Actually, it's kind of cool, right? It's it cool. is actually Should you cool. just have a picture of your brother-in-law's yeah, framed, that's, that's or thing, like, should you have some hot chicks in cool. it? Cool. Like when, when well, you could have, like, cut off our heads or something, you know. Just the chicks. Yeah. Naked. <laughs> just, just the naked. side cleavage. Side boob. Everyone loves side boob. <laughs> it's true. But yeah, so getting back to it a little bit, um, you guys have been there since day one, since before I was there, you know. Yeah, oh, uh, so do you want me to tell, I'll do the real quick back to the question. And, then, and back to, no, no, we like what to, we do. We go around the block about three yeah. or four times before we get back to what we were talking about We before. like to, we, it's easy conversation, so it just, you know, yeah. darts around so a we lot. So we, we, we heard so the story of, of, of uh, Brian Hayner all, making Michelle DiBenedetto, uh, Michelle Hayner. I'll make mine real quick and concise. Seventh grade, Matt just transferred to school, walked into Mr. Fairchild's class. Boom. I was fucking in love. <laughs> Done. End of story. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, was, that was the love story. Right? Yeah, was no, but I mean, I think story. that's incredible, too. Like, uh, when we talk about magic blessings, everything, like, just the stars aligning, basically. And... We were, I mean, we you were, you were in seventh grade and you're now have, you know, you've been together that entire time. Yeah. A so lot of people don't, I mean, I, that's very unheard of, right? Well, yeah, I would say we're sure. very lucky because like there's no um, gray area. It's like we know each other's history like so much. It's pretty incredible to like, we didn't meet when we were in our 20s and have to learn like what each other's tr- childhoods were about mm. or like, what did we grow up like? What did we do? Like we, like Matt lived one block away from me. We like snuck out in the middle of the night and we met in Central Park and we were like totally like straight and very polite and gracious and didn't do anything crazy at all. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were taking, stealing. <laughs> nobody, 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 nobody no, you're drinking. glad you're not in church right now because I think you'd burn we on totally, arrival. We, we 
totally weren't like stealing like our parents' Jack Daniel. Like, <laughs> yeah. And like we totally weren't like no, why doing we, anything crazy in the disgusting no, Central it was, Park it was, bathroom. It was no. walking <laughs> hand in hand through the park. It was very and nice discussing your moonlit most inner, walk. Yeah, nice moonlit walk. Yes, it was beautiful. <laughs> so, but anyway, so we, you know, we we grew up going to the same high school parties. Like we were always like together. Like we, our first like experience doing shrooms like together. Like mm-hmm. when Matt overdosed on acid, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> when Jimmy fucking sprayed a mint vials, dropper, a yeah. vial of acid into Matt's mouth, I was there. So it was. Uh, it, it's incredible to share those memories, like, and to be, you know, with him, like, at the very beginning is really awesome. But, of course, there's a lot of trials there, too. Like, we weren't, we talked about getting married when we were teenagers, like, 15. But we were like, oh, but we're too young, and blah, blah, blah. And so there were some, uh, you know, tricky, some tricky territory to navigate there, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but anyway... That wasn't very concise. So moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think people want to hear about that. I mean, and, uh, I think, as I said, it's just, it's incredible. Like, yeah, we're so lucky. It's, I we're can't all so lucky. We're, we're so close to you guys. Yeah, like we, the, we're we, all so, we're all really family in it. We're so really, blessed. To, I think like, a lot of people other, see you know? that when, uh, when we, when the, me and the boys talk about it and, you know, we just, it's more focused on, the, you know, the four or five of us, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're not faking the funk. Like we're a legit. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're family before we're avenged. Some of oh like, yeah, fuck. it's that that comes second. Absolutely. It's so unique, I think, and it is you know and obviously goes full spectrum with the you know how close we are with Lacey. Like that's so special. With you know all of us are just like knit close. Yeah. Knit, so we do vacations together. We do everything. Yeah. Together. And like and you know even for our own manager Larry Jacobson, he couldn't believe it the first time he saw it. He was like. <laughs> Wait, like these guys like just got off the road together, and, and the first thing you're gonna do is go hang out together. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I want to do. Together, yeah. I, I want to go over to fucking Johnny Saloon and and spend my five hundred dollars I earned on this fucking three month tour. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, good times. Great times. Great. I times. have actually, yeah. I think Brian and I have our relationship. We have Johnny Saloon to thank for that. Actually, that was a big part. Played a big part in it. Yeah. We have a lot to thank for yeah. Johnny Saloon. Yeah, that seriously. Was, that best, was literally the best bar memories. that we would come in. And we'd call, we, uh, someone would call you up. It was probably Brian that would call you up and tell you that we were going. And we'd literally come off the Brian freeway. Brian or Jimmy. Yeah, with the trailer still attached to the, va- to the van. Yeah. And roll straight into Johnny's before we even went to our houses. Oh, my God. And it, was, it was amazing. We go, we, we take our little envelopes of our money that we earned from that tour. <laughs> And then Johnny eventually was just like, I'm not taking your money. Such a, <laughs> such a mensch. Love it. But uh, uh, you mentioned good going dude. back good to dude. like, uh, like uh, house parties and stuff, like with Matt and Brian, and you guys, we all went to a lot of the same parties. I think that's actually what I attribute most of uh, how I joined the band was when I ran into you at, uh, at Nick Nguyen's Nick house. Nick Nguyen's house. I yeah. remember being in the yeah. backyard by the pool. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was incredible, actually. I remember that night. Perfectly. Like, what up, Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing these days? You yeah. want to quit high school? <laughs> you want to jo- you want to join a band? So no, I want you to. So I, I think my my, my like, audience has, has does heard everyone enough. know Val masterminded the whole thing? I don't think so. I tell it a little differently. So that's why I want to hear uh, uh, your side of it uh, and what you remember from that night. Because I, I mean. So leading up to it, I'll give a little lead up to it real quick. Uh, I'd been hanging out with the guys in the band. I know all the guys in the band, but wasn't you know I was just a little shithead uh, uh, little brother, and we'd watch them uh, rehearse in, at uh, the Sanders house, and uh, I came out to a chain reaction show first because um, I wanted to get support and, and buy a CD from there. I knew it was selling at Bionic Records at the time, but I didn't want to get Bionic Records. Records. I miss Bionic. Oh. Bionic. Ha. Huh. Good memories. Local record store. Uh, so instead of doing that, I wanted to go to the show and Chain Reaction and buy Sounding the Seventh Trumpet from, you know, the merch booth. Didn't know that Val would be running the merch booth. And she was like, oh, hey. <laughs> and I was like, what's up? <laughs> well, I was just here to support. And then, uh, you know, fast forward, you know, six months or whatever from there, it was uh, when we ran into Nick Nguyen's house, uh, house party. And uh, you were, we were talking. I was asking about, about what, what was up with the band. And then... Uh, you take it from there. 
Well, I'll take it a little bit back because I got to okay. really emphasize Johnny coming. So the band used to practice in Matt's garage, his parents' garage. And uh, Johnny had a friend that lived in the neighborhood. Right. And so they would walk by and come by the, the garage like during practice. They'd be jamming. They'd sit there like watching, jamming out. <laughs> we got free shows, man. And then, like, <laughs> and then, I'd, and then, like uh, we'd go to, we'd go eat right across from Marina. Oh, and I remember yeah. running into you. What was that? So there's the, lunch there was the you, you guys would Schlotzky's? go to Schlotzky's. <laughs> I love Schlotzky's. I love Schlotzky's. I was always, yeah, and I was no, always I was at OC Taco. It was the one next door, the yeah, Schlotzky's. The OC, OC Taco. Taco. Okay. So I remember Johnny, like, with his little shaggy hair, would, like, run in. He was, fire, like, super skinny, <laughs> and, like, it was, so we'd be like, what up, Johnny? And so then I, fast forward, there's just history there. I'd run into him all over HB. <laughs> and, uh run into him at our friend Nick Nguyen's house, and we had had some shaky ground switching through bass players, and I said, you know, Johnny, you jam on the bass? What do you think about uh, coming on tour? And I basically, I think I called Matt, like, on the spot. Mm -hmm. And then that the rest is history. Yeah, kind of, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, well, you know, how I remember it is, you know, I asked how the guys were doing, and you're like, oh, you know, they need to find a bass player right now, and, and you know, you play bass, right? And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, I, th I throw down for a little bit. I mean, especially if they just, they were coming up on the last two week of a co-headlining tour with, with, a, with a trio, last two weeks, rather. And I was like, well, I could at least take off time for that, you know? Normal people go on vacations. I'm going to take my one vacation I've ever had going through school and go, you know, play some shows. I was like, it'd be a great learning experience for me. Not thinking anything of it, you know, just not... Not thinking you were quitting school. <laughs> not thinking I was quitting school, not thinking any of that. I couldn't sell my mom on that at the time, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh, Leslie, come Don't. on. Come <laughs> on vacation. Oh, now she's our biggest fan, but... Yeah. <laughs> she would have regretted that big time if oh, she had yeah. said no. Mm. And then moving forward from there, it was, it was obviously that um, you had called them because they were out on the road, and I got a call literally, I think, the next night. With Matt, Brian, Zach, and Jimmy on the phone. And they were like... And I had jammed with Jimmy a little bit in the garage. Like, after, after those rehearsals, I was in yeah. there jamming with Jimmy. And uh, he, he was the other one, besides you, first advocate. He was the second one. Oh, that Jimmy was, like, was a huge advocate. He was like, no, this guy can actually play. And I was... Yeah. I couldn't really at the time. It took me a while to learn, but... Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy brought Brian in, too. Yeah. Jimmy did bring Brian in. Oh, yeah, Jimmy was, smooth. yeah, Jimmy was a huge advocate of Brian. Yeah. That was like all Jimmy. Now that we're talking about Jimmy, this is a perfect, easy segue. This is how the conversations go, right? Tell me a little bit about Jimmy and your words, Michelle. Your first time meeting him, you know, obviously all, all, the, all the audience knows that we lost the Rev in 2010. Um, was it 2009? It was the end of 2009? It was 2009, but like the last yeah. couple days. Last couple days of 2009, yeah. yeah. So you, can, um, you can go there, huh, Johnny? I got it. Drink up. Drink up. I let's, know. Let's, let's, we'll, we'll, take the, we'll, take a, we'll take a shot for the old boy in a second. Right. Okay. First, I want to hear you know, some of your fondest <laughs> memories, first time you met, met him, stuff like that. Um, funny enough, Jimmy used to drive me crazy when, he was, when we were in middle school. Well, I met him in middle school, but he was like, oh, he's getting me in trouble because he'd always be at our house. was like the party house, and he was always screaming. And I was always like, shh. <laughs> like, stop. We'd have people over. Like, my parents would, like, go out to dinner, and we'd have, like, our friends over. And But we were 12 years old. So yeah. it was, like, my parents go out for dinner, and, like, everyone's at my house. It's like, quick, we got Thank two you. hours. Mm -hmm. Start drinking. Let's play some James Bond. <laughs> and then, oh, yes, we were doing the yeah. James Bond. It was good. So, yeah, he used to, like, always, like, just make me, like, feel like, I was going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. But, um... Well, let's be real. I'll intercept real quick. He did get us in trouble. He yeah. He go into the garage and steal beers from my parents' fridge. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't remember. Jimmy, no. Yeah. That's surprising. Like, so. He got us in trouble all the time. Like, yeah. He would, like, be at our house out of a frying pan sipping beer. Out of oh, a, the a frying pan. Frying pan. In, like, the, in, in his fucking robe. <laughs> it was, yeah. That shit. So, well, if everyone's seen pictures of Jimmy in, in this era like you know he was he he was going through his robe 
he rat hair then? He was redhead, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. And um, so, you know, I was, I was not an angel child, but I was trying to stay a little bit out of trouble at the time. So, um, so that's how we started off. But, God, that man was so loving. And my, I think, actually, like, my memories of when Brian and I first started dating, I was actually, it was me, Brian, and Jimmy hanging out mm-hmm. all the time. And... Um, I remember just sitting Before in the car. Before you go for that, I want to I want to show everyone something real quick. Can you show them the the seven tattoo? Oh yeah, so that actually makes sense. Yeah, the, the three very the relevant. Three you got oh, that's, uh, that's so a cool. good that's a good memory right there actually. Um, but real fast, I was just saying, like we used to sit in his uh, what Pepper. was his car Pepper. And we just the like Thunderbird, we Blue just Thunderbird. like me, Brian, and gross. Jimmy would just like sit, so sit in there. Yeah, it was so smelly. <laughs> He just had a keg back there because uh, he had a keg back there for probably a year because he didn't know where to tap it. I was like, dude, that thing's not good anymore. The only thing <laughs> smellier was the van with Jimmy in the back. Oh, the world. world. The world that I used to oh, yeah. hang out with him. All right, sorry. <laughs> so, yes, I hung out in that car a lot. We, used to, I mean, we were underage, so it was like we're in a lot of places we could go. Yeah. <laughs> so we just like Party sorry. in the car. Party in the car. <laughs> well, um... What a loving person was he? Just like, like I feel like he was such a like huggy and and touchy person, but like not in a, a negative way, like in like such a like wonderful way. Um, embracing, and, so and embracing, big heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so the tattoo story is actually definitely one of my. My good ones. And it's a little wild, but, you know, many of our Jimmy stories are a little wild, if, if right? If Jimmy's involved, it's probably pretty wild. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So we were, we were all in Big Bear. I'm trying to decide how much of the story I should tell. Let it all out. We could edit anything later. <laughs> you be the vulgar dark comedy twin yeah. for once. <laughs> okay, bring it out. All right. Bring it out. Maybe I should show another side of me. Um... We were all in Big Bear. We were all staying at Matt's grandparents' cabin, and we um, we were on shrooms. Mm -hmm. And um, so we all decided to go to get a matching tattoo. And Jimmy wanted to get a shroom (laughs) on our toe. Duh. I mean, your shroom. That actually makes perfect sense. (laughs) Why didn't you get that? It 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 actually makes perfect sense. I wish I... I had gotten it, but despite the shrooms and the watermelon vodka that I was also drinking, I just thought it would be classier <laughs> to get a prison tattoo. <laughs> way classier. <laughs> uh, and so amazing. I came up with the seven because I'm April 7th, Brian's uh, July 7th, and then Jimmy just liked sevens. Like yeah, it was his lucky number. It was his lucky number. So I thought I it just kind of all of our everyone's lucky number. Everyone in the band just kind of adopted that as a lucky yeah. number. Yeah, seven. I, I think do everything all, in seven. So. All of our passwords are seven. If you want to break into any account, <laughs> yeah. try a seven. Like it's amazing. None of us have named our kids seven yet. So, oh, that actually would be cool. I mean, seven? I couldn't because I we, had, we had seven. a friend of oh. seven. Remember? What's he doing? I don't know, but I gotta hit him up. Yeah, Hi, seven. I love that dude. Oh dang! Yeah. Okay. Anyway, amazing sorry. drummer. Amazing drummer. Jimmy actually. Jimmy took, took a was lot very inspired before by we, it. Yeah. Before yeah. we played with uh, uh, um, Opiate for the Masses, Jimmy was very much kind of like Brooks is now. Just yeah. kind of plays, does his thing, shreds, yeah. Yeah. unassuming face the whole time. And it wasn't until he saw Seven that he saw started seven doing on, and he started on doing Tour, the, I remember the, the watching sticks. him with, yeah, totally. Watching Seven with Jimmy and Jimmy, yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely just really, different. like, creatively, like, opened his realm, I feel like. Absolutely. I absolutely did. Stylistically, yeah. Anyway. For sure. So I'll let you tell your Jimmy stories. Um... Well, I'm gonna be honest. I don't talk about Jimmy a lot. Yeah, it's like an open wound. Yeah, and you'd think that um, all these years later it would be like a little easier. But uh, you know, I still cry when I listen to fiction. Like it's, Oof, yeah, it's, it's a hard fucking, one. Uh, he was just that vibrant and magnificent that you just don't you don't get over losing that light in your life. You know, that's a great and point, yeah. I think what's incredible about Jimmy is that like. 
a hundred people called him their best friend. Yeah. And I like to say he was like... I actually said that at his memorial. He made everyone feel... He actually just gave me a flashback. He yeah. made it. He made everyone feel like... They were, were that special. Mm-hmm. Then that's... That is a just such an incredible trait, like to be able to, and, th- and that's really just about compassion and focus. Yeah. Like when you were with Jimmy, he wasn't flighty. He was like in with you. He kept mm-hmm. his attention Whatever to you. Whatever was going on. Yeah. It was your was, world. It was, was your world. Yeah. Deep. And most people don't do that. They're like, oh, what's going on? They're distracted. Yeah. They're like thinking about their own shit. Like he had his own shit, but when he was hanging out with you, it was like a whole whirlwind of just the two of you. And I think that he impacted so many people's lives that it... Um, Absolutely. Uh, don't worry about the side, the side noise. It's just... Don't worry about it. Background noise. Uh, I could clean it up later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, we're all family, and so yeah. there's a little bit of kids yeah, in that family background. Coming over. Right? One of my first episodes ever was having Jared and Duddy over, and Frankie came home screaming, and it was just part of the show. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> oh, I, well, I think it's even, like, shows that, like, we're not just doing a podcast. We're, like, yeah. having all our family get together because yeah. we're all... Because we are all family. Yeah. Family, you know? Yeah, and to your point about uh, Jimmy, just that world, like, when you're when you're in it, you're, you're in it, and I... Yeah. I, I I just wish a lot of me doing this show. It's been therapeutic, obviously. I could only imagine how much more Jimmy would slay this position. Like, how much he would just, like, be able to, as you said, just, like, it's all about you. And that's what a host's job is, you know? Like, and he, he could have, he did it naturally without even learning a trait for it, right? First of all, you're slaying. You're doing great. Yeah. But Jimmy, I, I didn't like that analogy, but... Like he, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not downsliding myself. He, I'm just saying, like, like but Jimmy no, I, would, would, I have agree. Been, would have been be a, fantastic at it. He'd be able to get into to your world and ask you unique, intriguing questions mm-hmm. to that really mattered. Like, what do you know? Like, really pull you out of your shell, you know? Yeah. And I think, um, you know, he had he had so many best friends. He's so close to so many people. Uh, but I still, I just have this, the most magical moments with him. And just, mm-hmm. and I, I remember the first time I met him, by the way, yeah, he fucked with me. Like, I'll never forget the first year I was driving my parents' Suburban, and we're driving down the street, and I'm like, like, I'm 16, driving down. Driving probably, like, and eight people in the Suburban. Yeah, they all <laughs> swooshed in the Suburban. Or more. And yeah. there's the, one of those um, road construction, like, triangle, like, things that, like, with a... The reflective things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hanging out the window and he grabs one and flings it against the car and scratches up the whole fucking car. (laughs) And I was like, (laughs) like it was traumatizing at that age. Like I had to bring the fucking car home all scratched up. And and try to tell that story. And then like, (laughs) Like, Jimmy did it. Jimmy did it. But how do you tell that story? (laughs) My friend was hanging out the window, grabbed the... That's why he ended up with fiction down his chest because if you just heard any of the stories that Jimmy did pre-Avenged Sevenfold, you would think that there's no human that lived that way. During Avenged Sevenfold, still fiction. Totally. I think that was actually the most perfect thing he ever did was get that tattoo because his life was so much more incredible than other people. Mm-hmm. He lived like to the fullest and above. Well, wouldn't you like, say he, you know, so many of us worry about what other people think and he just lived in, in complete disregard for what society oh. thought. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And sometimes that made... Maybe even me mad. uncomfortable, you know, because it was so far out there. Well, we got but God, can you imagine living that way? It's like I think we don't all try to, especially care. you know. I I, I think that's I like such an inspiration. It has, yeah, yeah it's I, always I was an inspiration. Why yeah. so inspiring yeah. to begin with? Every high school party we were ever at, like you know, in high school, you're like you want to look cool. You're worried about what people think. Jimmy didn't give a fuck. Like, we got in so yeah. many fights because of Jimmy. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care, but it was just like, he just, 
he rubbed people the the wrong way because they were so scared and insecure themselves. Oh yeah. And here was Jimmy, this vibrant, open, just cut wide open human. Mm -hmm. And I think people were afraid of that uh, vibrancy, yeah. that yeah. that complete disregard for like yeah. society's well, rules. People are always afraid you know? of something that they can't understand. Oh yeah. And yeah. that was Jimmy. Like he was seriously a supernova. He just shown. He was just like so fucking bright that he just couldn't last he just burst yeah well let's 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 take a cheers well, to the old boy yeah Are we not cheers and to we'll Jimmy. move on to lighter things you did mention kind of segue me for it cheers cheers brother um you mentioned getting in a lot of fights and uh, -oh. uh, uh i want to i want to bring up one of my favorite fights i saw you guys in was at my mom's house. One. <laughs> Wait, by the way, can I, before you get into that one, because I'm scared, Lacey from the get-go still holds that against me. <laughs> but I, but way before that, at St. Bonaventure, one of my favorite fights ever is Matt's brawling with someone, and Jimmy, since we are talking about Jimmy, I have to tell the story. Jimmy gets down on his hands and knees for Matt to push, push the guy this over, guy the old over. school. <laughs> in a legit fight, though. This wasn't yes. like a playground, like, let's have yes. some fun. He did it in a legit fight. <laughs> we were like 16 or something. Do you think like, Jimmy was ever afraid of a fight? Like, because I don't think he could take it that seriously. You oh, know what no. I mean? Like, like he never really took fights seriously, but then I've seen him like, like the 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 San Diego show when he fucking do when he got the name Dozer, Dozer. after he, after like he was like three people behind and came over the and knocked that dude out. <laughs> oh my god! I that talked about that with Mike when we were golfing. Fat Mike, the like a month ago now. Yeah, but like, we were golfing. I was telling him I was like, you know, the first time I met you, Mike, I I, I had a bunch of cocaine. I was supposed to go to your room, <laughs> and we ended up getting a fight in the in the parking lot instead. <laughs> Uh, Mike was out of my house the other night and very sober and wonderful. He's been awesome. He's I mean, been, I mean, he's, 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 he's such a good dude in general, sober or not. But oh, I mean, he totally is. Yeah, he's, he's a good great, person and yeah. he's been uh, really self-growth. Yes. Cool. It's, cool. it's been really cool to see him. Um, it seems to have really gained his confidence. I mean, not that he had a problem with confidence before, speaking to someone who just doesn't give a fuck. Like, yeah, yeah, totally. He does give a fuck. I correct that. He cares so much that it's it comes off as not giving a fuck. If that makes but any sense. Back to Jimmy. Yeah. I mean, once you get me on the tangent of Jimmy, I can't get off of it. He gave a fuck so much. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a different degree. Like he gave a fuck about his circle yeah. so much. Like if he thought one of his friends' family was peeved or angry in any way, he was like. Devastated. But that's why I tried to keep calling it like society's rules because yeah, he didn't give a fuck about what society what, like random thought strangers things should. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah totally. like like he he would run rampant in public in ways that I think many would not. You know? Yeah, hundred percent. But what were you talking about? Biden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one. I tried to change the subject. So I'll, I want to tell a little story about. Um, I think it was my. We'll just call it my 21st birthday because I know I got kegs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that means nothing. That means absolutely nothing, but okay. We'll Still living it. at my parents' house, and um, I got three kegs, invited everyone over, another kegger. It was a house party. Oh, it was. It was a, it was a real deal, three kegger. It was a rager. <laughs> it was crowded. And at some point, there was a group of people there, and I think it was either it was one of you two walked up to me and was like, do you know some of these people? And I was like, oh, actually, I don't. Like a bunch of randoms. It was just walked randoms in, yeah. Just walked in. And then, it was me. Oh, uh, yeah. So it was Val. And you, you walked in and you were like, do you know these people? I'm like, no. I think they're just crashers. And they're like, do you want me to start getting them out of there? I was like, I mean, there was a good 30 to 40 of them. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, uh, yeah, sure. And then like Jason joined <laughs> yeah, in, too, sure. Jason Barry. <laughs> And then, like, we all started to kind of try, and they were not going easy. Like, I think their whole point it was, was to be free keg. <laughs> yeah. So, like, at some point, someone back talked to you. I don't remember exactly what happened, but uh, uh, the whole fight was backyard to front yard. Like, it was just a brawl all through the fucking house. So, so sorry, it, Leslie. <laughs> I know. Oh, I had to tell my mom that night. She was actually, she came home early from work that night, and I was like, Mom, just go stay in your room. 
And she's like, what's going on out here? And every, actually, everyone's fucking throwing furniture and getting fucked up. I am like, go back to your room. I'll fix it later. Go back I to your room. I remember when she, I remember I when remember she came, came home out, and I was yeah. like horrified. <laughs> but by then I was already deep. My hair had fucking pulled out hair. She like, pulled out your hair. Oh, then, yeah. I had like a quarter show. size bald spot forever. It was crazy. Zach got a bottle but knocked over his head. A 40 knocked over yeah, his head. Yeah, it started that outside was <laughs> It started outside with, out. with, with Zach. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, no, no. It started outside with me mm-hmm. because this. Oh, both. Okay. But both of you guys in the same I, circle, I, right? I was very politely asking people whether they knew you or not. I just, I just remember being like, and of course, snotty because I was, in, I was like, what, like nineteen? Or no, actually, yeah. it was, I was older. Twenties. Well, we were in our early twenties. Okay. okay, whatever. I was twenty-one. Remember? I was, I was still immature. <laughs> And so I was like, I was with Brian, so it must have been early twenties. Yeah, yeah, it was very early twenties. If I'm being honest, I think it was my nineteenth like, birthday. Damn, I was still fighting like a fucking. <laughs> I know. No, the fight came to you. The fight yeah, came exactly. To you. I still say this to that day. I yeah. never threw a punch first. No, um, I witness. So she, this girl, I was just like, hey, do you know whose party this is? Like, and she had no clue. I was like, we're asking people to leave. And she just went, like, aggro. She's yeah. Like, fuck you, bitch. I'm not getting out of here. And then, like, it, you know, how it goes from there. It just goes. I so remember at one it point. Val it was, and I. Basically, you know, it ended up. So what ended up happening, to most of the guys that were fighting kind of, like, started to back off and make it out, out, make their way out of the house. But the girls in the, in the Crashers crew, we'll call them. Crashers crew. Were, were like. <laughs> They weren't going anywhere, and it was no. up to you to like you were taking on about like six or seven different girls. It was up to you. One, to yeah, because I think oh. you were like, Lacey was there. I was just courting her at the time. We oh, weren't no. even dating. Yeah. She was there, and that's horrified. why. She <laughs> was, By the way, <laughs> we're we we You guys were nineteen. I remember you. Being I was 19. trying to. No, he let just the kids said he thought they were. Oh. Wait well, till you're 21. No, I just <laughs> said he, he just said he thinks he was 19. Oh, I, I missed. The, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but sorry. we can talk about cocaine. Okay. Yeah. So okay, yeah, well, I, I, always, I always feel like we almost like ruined your chances with Lacey. <laughs> oh, we totally no, did. it totally did. It, it, happened. it took me another like month to get her back, oh, and I was already in the inn. She was and then like, I was like, she's like, no, I no. can't do that. The valid Victorian came into she this group so like, who she are the these people? She was the president. Okay, president. <laughs> okay, but regardless, and I love you, Lacey, but she was super preppy, and we were like, not her crowd. No. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, who the fuck are these people? Get me out of here. <laughs> no, I mean, when we first, you guys remember when we first started dating, she show up in. Uh, was that the the polo shirts with the yeah. little uh, oh, yeah. alligator on yeah. it? Yeah, polo oh, yeah. 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 That's she what she wore all shirt. the time. And then I'll never forget. I'm going to call you out on this one, Lacey. Do you, remember, do you guys remember when we played like the Soma one time when we were finally, me and her were dating? And she came like wearing something totally not her, like fishnets and shit. <laughs> I don't and remember I remember that. like, I like we rolled up separate because I just started dating. Like we all rolled she up in the band. She was trying to fit in. And she was trying to fit in. And I was like, babe, you don't need to do this. <laughs> that is so <laughs> cute. And I didn't think much of it, I guess. I yeah, know. I it's, just like, that. it's just but stuff that I remember. I feel like people did that. They went to shows and they like dressed entirely different. You could always pick them out of the crowd. You were like, that's a costume. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. Well, I mean, and we talk about it too. Like, you know, guys... With long hair, all of a sudden, like come out of the woodwork. So you're like, you know, when we're in business. I brought that for Lacey. You're cracking that open. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lace. It's mine now. It's my house now. Keep it Uh Yeah, but we always talk, we always joke about that. Like, where are these metalheads during the day? You know what I mean? Like the guys with the long hair, the patches, everything. You know, you don't have a job showing up like that. Oh, so no. like, where? They clean where up. They clean Which, up. Yeah. They clean up, girl. You got to clean and up. And it's an escape. I mean, that's kind of what it all, what it all yeah. is. I really appreciate it. Like, I, I'd do the same when I was, you yeah. know, when I was younger and stuff. Like, I dress the part, you know? I don't anymore. I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't I became get, a dad. I, started, I stopped I dyeing I don't my hair. I don't think <laughs> any of us dress the part quite as much anymore. It's an sure. edgy Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, it's yeah. super it's edgy. Black it's, and it's white. It's got pineapples instead of flowers. What the fuck? It's like, <laughs> I mean, I, like I, I really like that shirt. Fuck. I wear that shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Well, speaking of fashion, since you guys are giving me compliments about fashion, 
Let's oh. talk about. Let's talk about some St. Elmo's. Oh, okay. So we, we brought know you a little some bit about stuff. fashion. We're gonna to try you, on. Try some stuff I'm, on. I'm We're gonna to. style love you. To. Style We're me gonna up. make that oh, shirt wait, wait. cool, Johnny. All Actually, right. <laughs> this can edge up your shirt. Okay, let's see it. Let's oh, see it. I always thought that. So before those before Johnny's on, I want to let everyone know St. Owen. You could follow him on Instagram at St. Owen. Do uh, you guys have Twitter, Facebook, all those as well? Um, we try. Not really, but at St. Owen, if we're going to get Dot, all yes, sell- okay. sellable. We'll put it right down below. You guys, it'll be in the oh, description God. as well. Um, uh, anyway, that's about it. We pay attention to very few social media outlets because we're... And we're, you guys have a .com, obviously, then too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you find St. Owen and .com. So yeah. this is the company that you guys started in... Uh, going back to a little bit of Jimmy, I know where the origin of the of the name came from. Maybe you could tell uh, the fans a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Well, St. Owen. Obviously, Jimmy was um, our inspiration. Owen is his middle name. And, you know, aside from Jimmy's creativity, which we always aspire to um, above and beyond, he would always wear the most insane sunglasses. Like, he would buy mm-hmm. women's sunglasses and wear them. He liked then, the cat eye ones. Is that your kid crying? Yes. <laughs> Which I mean, one though? You've got two of them. No, it's the, the baby that That's Monroe? should probably be attended oh, to. Money. Oh, oh, man. Oh, Brian, money. I told you Brian would be over here as soon as he can. Oh, like, I know. You like, called it out. Back to St. Okay, Owen. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I, I get awkward with St. Owen anyway because I'm not really very good at promotion. But I've never no. been good saleswomen. Those, <laughs> those are flashy. These are... Uh, wait, like did a, you put them on yet? I haven't. I haven't oh, yet. Oh, go, go, go. All right. I just think there's... Color is gonna. I actually, I think you need those. You need those. I think we just picked the first pairs um, sold. Oh, are we already done? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> everyone, I want to, I want to see your comments uh, right here. I'm gonna try on some different glasses. Which ones are your favorites? Mm-hmm. Uh, let, let's I go through that. I want to see this too. I want to see which ones look best on me and which ones you'd like for yourself. Oh, I and uh, maybe at the I end like of it, this. we give a little giveaway. How about we do that? <gasps> oh, we I could do like that. This. Uh, we do like, 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 okay. The, Wait. Top top comment, the one that we agree with the most. Johnny, Look at you on the fly. Huh? You are hired for our marketing. Can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> You're so much better than us. You're all crazy. I don't know about that, but yeah, we'll do we'll do a little giveaway. Here you Everyone are. Comment, I'm just comment right below here. Um, if you're listening on uh, the podcast, go ahead and comment there too. We'll pick our favorite answer of mm. of of uh, which pair of sunglasses I need to wear from now on for the rest of my life. And winner's gonna get uh, winner's, winner's gonna, gonna get uh, a pair of Saint Owen glasses. Beautiful, I love it. We'll get those shipped out. All right, next, next, same style translucent gray. Ooh, this is a little more. I gotta mild. say, more mild. It's more mild, which is not usually my flavor, but I like the way that. Can you tell me about why these lenses look purple on the inside? That's an AR coating. It's an anti-glare coating. Ooh. So. When you're outside, the reflection off of water, this, that, won't affect you as much. Wow. My wine still looks good, so I like it. Yeah. Um, just, I'm going to need to wear these glasses it. on you the show You see it on the reflection, you, you but it doesn't You guys are seeing these lights, too, that I see all the time when I'm doing this show. It's, it's a little glaring, right? It's a little glaring. Yeah. yeah. Fuck I mean, you, Yeah, that color looks good on you, too. It's just a matter of how bold I you want to be. Yeah, I think it's like... I'm a pretty bold guy. Yeah, what? I feel like you're <laughs> It's like, what do you want to go with your like, outfit? Well, like, uh, you took oh, a picture of my are, wardrobe, Michelle, and put are, it in your uh, in yeah. your bathroom. I loved that. I, I also really, contributed uh, to stuff. some of that wardrobe. Yes, you did. You helped me out with the white jacket. Oh, uh, I forgot about that. Like, yeah, yeah, that cute. put uh, the, the Jimmy patch on it and my uh, late great-grandfather's patch on the back from when his, he was in the Air Force. And that is still, I'm so glad that I you closer to the that shit family. out of it, too, didn't I? Yeah. Or no. You had to. It was it was a white leather jacket that like it was too stiff to wear. So you you washed it several times, distressed it for me, put a bunch of stuff on it. Yeah. Fashion. That's how I got into a fashion, lot of fashion. I, I started making cut brain and glasses, cut and sew, all that fun stuff. Yeah. All right. I don't know if we, this These is are, all about the red lens. I do love you, the do red lens. Do you feel lens. happier? I do. <laughs> no, no. I, that's funny that you say that, but like, as soon I looked over here because I was like, the world looks like a brighter place. I'm like, am I high? Like, this is awesome. So it does affect your mood. Like, it totally it, does. It actually is. And like, this is like scientific and everything like that. Like, I no. mean, I don't want to quote that. No. There's people. <laughs> there, is, what? No. No. there are people pushing that. Okay. 
We're, we're not prepared to push that ourselves, but, okay. but have, you could give it a shot. Let I mean, I'll tell you, you right feel. now, it mellowed out the lights. I'm telling you, like, when... You're chilling. I'm chilling. Straight chilling. Straight chilling. <laughs> it, is, it has nothing to world. do with the they're alcohol. They're in the world right now. <laughs> it has All nothing right. to do with the alcohol. Alcohol or, doesn't affect Or me. hanging out with your best friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, totally different shape. Try that out. Definitely never seen you in anything like this. You've never worn anything like this. But it works. Well, I mean, I mean, before St. Owen, I only wore Ray-Bans, and now I'm only going to wear St. Owen, you know. But, uh, yeah. Fuck well, I, always, I always wear the aviators before. Ray-Ban, blasphemy. I know. It is, it is blasphemy. I know. I know. Monopoly. Blasphemy. Okay, I... Oh, wait. I'm not going to say what Speaking I prefer. Of, no, wait, we want... Of, we want yeah. Everyone else to decide what we prefer. Well, no, everyone else vote, is gonna. Right? Everyone's gonna vote right here in the comments below, um, or uh, on the ratings and reviews on your podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast. I, um, I you just mentioned though, real quick, uh, you know, calling out Ray Ban mass produce. How are you guys producing this? Let's let's get into what what goes into the quality are, and why these are better and why they feel. I mean, I'm telling you right now, they feel better than any other glasses that I wear. And I'm not bullshitting on that. Like, you could feel the weight. They, they're comfortable. Hired for marketing and yeah, sales. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So um, we manufacture in Italy, and, and we really care about making long-lasting quality pieces that actually, because we call it slow fashion. Like, we're not here to, like, churn through, you know, crap. And mm. I'm not calling Ray-Ban crap, but um, we make all of our sunglasses out of a really high quality Italian made acetate and um, they just quality long lasting and I could tell Val really wanted to talk so you can go ahead and then <laughs> she could Johnny feel me that, was, like, that, was, and that, then, was, that was twinning right there and then, well it's funny and then Johnny can crop me out and put you in I could tell because I I Jumped in because I think she's talking more than me. I'm trying to insert myself a little bit. <laughs> Jeez. You did, but then, you, you did I, but then I got fight. nervous because I felt her bird dog in me. I was like, oh, I hope I'm doing a good enough job over here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, Val would like to give no. her, her spiel no, I, over here. I have, I have nothing to say. Okay, but... <laughs> I'm just going to say, and I'm not going to go off on mass production and some of the brands, there's this license out and they churn out this very generic, nothing to do with their actual brand. Um, we, uh, you know, we design everything ourselves. We take the prototypes, we make sure they're comfortable, durable. We are able to, through wonderful connections, do small batch. So everything is small quantities which is very unique for that mm -hmm. the industry. It's hard to get. It's like more limited edition yeah. and yeah. Able to do like unique colorways, unique accents. Everything we do is custom. Um, we do. How many designs are you guys up to now? Because I know when you started there was what, two or three? We actually launched ridiculously with five. Okay. In four colorways. Which so might like, not sound ridiculous to everyone, but it's very, it, it's that's not the way it's usually done for eyewear it's just a more complicated expensive it's, process you know it, like it's yeah. not like you just drop like a bunch of but like this was a passion project for you guys too this isn't a money grab you guys absolutely you guys have, passion you guys project have a fashion you we are obviously have a fashion sense and you wanted a pair of sunglasses i know you guys forever like you guys have always been rocking different glasses over the years and well, and we wanted a creative outlet and you know mm -hmm. obviously how like involved and passionate we are about this brand and i i think that it's like valve's point she's trying to get to is that it's like a more personal experience with us like mm -hmm. i literally like reply to like customer service emails like sometimes like no, i'm just like we're very like I mean, this is our like, baby yeah, you know it's just yeah. like what i did with the band i wear a lot of fucking hats like yeah. it's and i think that's like what the world needs like a little bit of intimacy like we yeah, we want we, a face to the brands that we We want support. our customers to feel connected yeah. with us. Yeah, you hire this guy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually our brand ambassador. <laughs> Don't know if you realize yeah, you that. Yeah, you face to the brand. Good old Don. <laughs> That's good old Don. So, 
But anyway, but great segues, Johnny. You're doing great. <laughs> and we have, <laughs> like, the there. most amazing customers. I don't know. It's too. We're just okay. talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually genius. You did your research. But this is like a passion project for you. Yes, actually, it is. Like, I didn't have to do research for this you. one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You just this is actually the first one in probably a long time I haven't had a whiteboard. You know what we forgot to do on, on these glasses? So we've, we've, this is now the third pair. What are the names of these glasses so that they know what, what they're looking for? If they, that if was they Cash. That this, was Cash. Do you okay. know? This is perfect for you. This one's called She Wolf. She Wolf Rar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, let's wait, keep going we, with the glasses. Did you bring so yellow? I want to see. We've tried Cash and Did you bring yellow? I didn't bring yellow. Oh, okay. Never mind. So, real quick on Cash. Yes. That's uh, your, your youngest son's name. Yes. Also, not to go. Completely always back to Jimmy, but it is a, a, a testament to the fact that each one of us, at least our firstborns, you get him names, names, right? James. Oh my God, so many Jim, James going on. So we have River James. Well, I'll, I'll go with mine, and then Michelle will go with hers. Uh, and then Cash is Cash Owen. Mm -hmm. And then Nicolangelo, St. James. You guys just had to be different. And, and Monroe. Oh, Monroe St. James. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had Franklin James and uh, Zach had Tennessee James. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible, really. Again, thank you guys so much for being on the show. Thank you. Awesome. Having, so you know, much insightful love stuff. Thank you so Everyone much. Go, love you guys. I love you more than anything. Love you. Cheers. Everyone go check out St. Owen everywhere. Easy enough. Just type in St. Owen on your... Google search or uh, go over to at St. Owen, eight, at Saint dot Owen on Instagram <laughs> and uh, go to uh, everything St. Owen dot com. Buy some sunnies. Or it, it's it's tis the season, as they say. True. And uh, don't forget to vote on which sunglasses you liked on me better because oh, yeah. those are going to be the ones I, I wear next know. time when I get really high in an episode so you don't see my red eyes. Anyways, Perfect. Perfect. Go check out the podcast as well. Subscribe there. And uh, again, thank you guys. The De Benedettos. Oh, I'm sorry, they have new names now. You are. Oh, know. we're still oh, with De Benedettos. He still knows our maiden name. That's impressive. <laughs> the De Benedetto twins. We'll always be the De Benedetto twins. All right. <laughs> Love you guys. Cheers, everyone. Thanks Cheers. for tuning in. We'll Cheers. see you guys next time.